All right. I think we're streaming. We'll give that a minute to catch up. Um, and it looks like we are streaming. Sending the robots are sending the announcements to the people that subscribe to our YouTube channel. Great. All right, that's on. All right. Um, I'm going to hit the recording. There we go. Um, I'm going to spotlight myself really fast while I share my screen and just give a little intro. Um, wonderful. There we go. Uh, um, oh, look, we're already at the end. We'll just scroll all the way to the top. Um, okay, so hi, everybody. Welcome. It's Friday evening here. It might be Friday afternoon somewhere else, and I know it's Saturday morning other places, but we call it the Friday night workshops anyway. Um, you're at the Sequential Artist Workshop. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, if you don't know, SAW is a nonprofit, 501c3. Um, we have lots of courses and classes that you can um, learn comics from. You can find out at more at learn.sawcomics.org. Um, what else? Oh, we have some upcoming courses like Jess Rolofson's Bootlegger's Guide to Color. She's going to teach everything about color like so that you don't need to obsess with and how you can just sort of get away with just a little bit of knowledge and just a little bit of stress instead of a lot of stress and a lot of worrisome theory. She lets you get away with a lot. Um, and then next week in the same um, in the same space, Daisy R, June 16th, she's calling it Out of the Box. I'm going to hide this thumbnails. And yep, that's that week. And also in the late in live person work to Florida, late July, July 25th to 28th, I think, 24th to 28th. And if you're interested in that, come down, um, go, go to learn.sellcomics.org and check that out. It'll be really fun. Um, we do that once a year. Uh, we'll skip that slide. Okay, so um, what you do tonight, you can share it on social media, hashtag Friday Night Comics. You can tag us at Comics Workshop. Um, you can also roll over to members.sellcomics.org and share there. Um, I sort of don't think Trinidad's on in Instagram anymore. Is that right, Trinidad, or are you? Oh, you're muted again. Do you want to unmute? You can unmute and we can talk. I'm about going it. to put in the chat my okay. Instagram. Okay. I couldn't find it. I, I Maybe it was an old one I had. It's a secret. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks to everybody who donated. Um, we really survive and we keep these free and affordable by your donations. Um, and there are lots of ways to support us, pay, PayPal, Patreon, um, and you can... Um, become a sustaining member if you like. That's on the website as well, learn.sawcomics.org. Um, okay, I guess we're ready to start. Please no inappropriate speech or imagery. We like to keep it PG-13 because sometimes um, sometimes we have really awesome teens and tweens here working on comics. Um, so enjoy. Um, I'm so excited that Trinidad is here. Thank you for being here. Also, um, Trinidad, you are our first person from the Field Guide to Graphic Literature to, to that we're featuring on a Friday night comic. And for those of you who don't know, this is really the first time I'm announcing it. We did this wonderful book called The Field Guide to Graphic Literature. It features about 28 artists, I think. Trinidad is one of them doing um, the poetics of page design. And you get um, a, an essay, a, uh, a workshop sort of idea, and um, oops, that's something else, and some other pages. Oh, that's my music. How weird is that? OK, I will stop <laughs> sharing. And I will hand it over. I'm going to spotlight. Um, stop. There we go. I'm gonna spotlight um, Trinidad for the moment. Well, welcome Trinidad, and feel free to tell us about any books that you want to promote, and also guide us through any workshop and any any help that you need from me. Just chime in, and otherwise, I'm going to be in the um, chat summarizing what you are saying. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks sure. everyone for being here, and I'm really happy to spend time with you and make some art today. Um, it's the end of my week, so this is a good way to kind of close it off with some company and writing and drawing. Um, I'm going to go over really quickly uh, the format of today's workshop. I'm going to share a screen with you as well, and hopefully you can see uh -huh. the very bright slides. Okay, let's see if I can go backwards forwards. Doop, doop, doop. Okay. So um, 
just before we begin, I just want to let everyone know that I do have a neurological disability, so I might look around or repeat things or um, various things might happen, and I am still here and present with you and excited to be here, and I'm not bored, and I'm not rolling my eyes at you. I'm absorbing everything that you're saying, and I'm very excited to hear, um, and I do want to acknowledge everyone for taking time to be here when they're busy and they have lives that are full and there's a lot of art to be made. So it's it's nice that we can all kind of absorb and generate something together at the end of the week. Um, first, we're going to briefly talk about Filipino form poetry. And then we're going to talk about um, rhyming and poetic uh, craft elements that kind of overlap with uh, comics craft. And I'm sure a lot of people in here already know some of this uh, elemental stuff, but I'm still going to go over it just in case there's young people watching. Um, we're going to kind of look at quatrains using like one or two examples in Western contemporary poetry. We're going to free write, we're going to draw, and we're going to put that stuff together to form a poem comic. Um, if we have time, hopefully, we're going to make sure that we have time to share. I'd love to see what you all come up with. And then I have recommendations for reading, uh, reading poetry comics, studying um, poetry and Filipino poetry, and then some. And we will have a break. And I will be sure that we have a break um, shortly after we finish uh, our, our writing exercise. So if you don't already have these materials in front of you, you can grab them really quickly paper, pencil. Um, you don't need a pen. You can use a pen if you're really bold and that's your personality type. Um, maybe an eraser if that's your personality type and a ruler. Um, something to drink so that you can just kind of stick around and uh, enjoy and sink into the moment. Uh, any music that you like or something to play in the background if that helps you. And a blanket or a cushion. Make sure that you're comfortable. I like to remind folks to try to be comfortable because if you are a cartoonist or writer, you want to have a sustainable practice. Um, and that means taking care of our bodies. So feel free to also get up and stretch if you need to. Stretch your back, your hands, um, take breaks without asking permission or um, letting folks know. You can just go ahead and do that. So we're gonna uh, kind of dive in. Um, in my cartooning practice, I tend to uh, try to lean into contemplative practice. So I start off with breathing or a type of meditation that just involves breath work. So if we can all do that together really quickly, it won't take very long. Just wanna give you a moment to be here with us. You can keep your feet firmly planted on the ground, but if you are seated in a different kind of position, just make sure you feel sturdy and supported. Um, you can close your eyes, but if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can just keep your eyes, your gaze uh, soft a few inches over your nose. We're just basically going to take a few breaths together. Um, we can inhale at about four seconds, hold for four seconds, exhale at four seconds, and hold for four seconds. Um, and of course, you can adjust this based on how you feel. And we'll go ahead and start that right now. And, and you can stop when I instruct you to stop. So again, nice and comfortable. Relax your eyes or your gaze and inhale. Try to count your breaths. And we'll do this about 10 times. While you're focusing on your breath, you can remind yourself that you're here to have fun and that you deserve to have fun. And you can tell yourself that it's okay to make mistakes and move on. We'll do a few more breaths.
And when you're ready, you can come back to class, be present with us again, and get out a piece of paper. I have my tablet and I was going to hook it up so that you guys could see, but I don't have enough memory. And so I'm going to uh, just show you some drawings that um, I prepared for the class um, eventually. I can draw uh, examples if uh, folks have questions of how to um, make something, but for now, we're just gonna try to push through this warm up. We're gonna make a six panel grid. Six panel grid, that means six panels. And it doesn't need to be super neat. Is that six? Uh, I cannot see that. Six panel grid. Any which way you like. You can also fold your piece of paper if that helps. Essentially, we're gonna take a few minutes, just three minutes total, and you're gonna fill each of those panels with a well-known cartoon character, comic book character, someone from an animated film. But your goal is to make them identifiable. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You can use stick figures. And once you have that grid done, we can jump into it. Are we taking three minutes for the entire six panels or per panel? Um, we are gonna do three minutes total. Oh, wow, all right. So speed drawing. Fun. Fun panic drawing. That's how everyone knows <laughs> Okay, I'm going to start the clock. Remember, you're going to fill each panel with one character, and you're going to try your best to make them identifiable. And go. Don't think too hard. Think about elements that make those characters stand out. And I'll occasionally shout out the time so you know how less and less time you have. <laughs> Is today Donald Duck's birthday? <laughs> it's the first I'm hearing, but I, I, I would believe it. That. We were at the one minute mark. One minute left or one minute in? One minute in. Okay, thank you. I hope people are relaxed drawing this and not sweating. <laughs> You will not be graded, just judged by your peers. We have one minute left. Thirty seconds left. 
Oh no. <laughs> And time, pencils down, shake out your wrist. What we're going to do is, as part of our introductions to each other, um, is we're going to share what we drew, which characters we drew. And if you'd like to share little elements that you chose uh, to make those characters dis distinct and recognizable, um, you're going to share with us your name, if you'd like your pronouns, um, let us know if you draw or write already where you're from, yep. and if you wanna answer what you're excited about um, to learn in today's workshop or to just do in today's workshop. Um, so I will start and then I'm going to send it over to Tom to answer. So my name is Trinidad Escobar. I am she, they, um, I draw and I write. I'm in California in the Bay Area. Um, my characters, I did not, draw for this particular warm up, but I have drawn them several times over and I drew in my head the Simpsons characters. <laughs> I hope you can imagine what those look like. Um, and I am excited to just see what people come up with today because it's always surprising. Um, it's just delightful to see what people write and draw. Tom. Uh, sure. You want to hear from me? I uh, Let's see. Well, yep. I draw and write sometimes. Um, I'm from Providence, Rhode Island at the moment. I drew uh, Bart Simpson, um, uh, uh, the <laughs> Frosty the Snowman, uh, Harry Potter, Jesus Christ, and Darth Vader. And I didn't draw a sixth one. And I'm excited to learn about whatever forms of poetry we're going to learn about today. And if we're going to take some others, I may have to unmute people. So how many would you like to take? And should we have them raise hands or something? Let's do at least or five. Five? You want to do five? Okay. Maybe maybe we should um, stop sharing for the moment. That'll put the grid okay. back up. And then we can take the first five hands that are raised. So Alun is there. So I'll ask Alun to unmute. Okay. I don't know if we're supposed to show it or not. But yeah, I just kind of panicked and drew random characters, three of which turned out to be cartoon characters. I drew... Star from Star vs. Princess of Evil, uh, Scrooge McDuck, a vampire that was originally supposed to be a vampire from Dungeons and Dragons, but I figured no one would know who that was, so I figured it's Dracula instead. Um, in the, uh, Inigo Montoya from the, uh, well, here, let's see if I can share. I know in who that is. Inigo yeah. Montoya, who I thought wouldn't be recognizable, so I drew kind of a six-fingered hand in the foreground. Uh, Jabba the Hutt, and, uh, and the main villain, whose name uh, escapes me off the top of my head from... Uh, from Gravity Falls, who's a uh, the pyramid guy? What's his name? Anyway, so oh yeah, I can't show it, so I can't uh, I can't show the screens. So I can't show them. They're very bad drawings, but that's when I drew this first character came to mind. Bill Cipher, yes, someone said in chat that was the name of the character. <laughs> okay, so that was what I drew. And we're getting some people in the chat. I don't know I if you can so. see those Trinidad. Kind of dad. I'm I also reading those, screen, but I can kind of show it this way. Oh well. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Wait, Lovely. Well, spotlight real fast. Oh, oh, there we go. Uh, and it looks like Marlene wants to go. Marlene, I've unmuted you if you want to tell us, I'll, and I'll let you. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to talk about it, not show okay. anything. Okay. okay, sounds great. Um, I haven't chosen a known cartoonist uh, or cartoon pers personality. My name is Marlene. I'm excited about being here today. Uh, thank you to um, Trinidad for her inspiration and meditation. Uh, my theme is protest, believe it or not. My character is from the Roman Empire, 37 BC, and his name is King Caligua the Weird. So I'm going to draw a bit of caricature around him being weird and what happened. <laughs> lovely thank you thank Great. you thanks marlene and 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 again trinidad in this in the chat we have uh pebbles and wilma from the flintstones lassie 
uh, bottomly pots covered in spots. I don't know what that is, but anyway, you can, I'll let you, I'll let you uh, curate the chat as you wish, and then tell us where we're going from here. Look at all these well-read people. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I'm glad some folks are excited to make some poetry comics, um, specifically learn about Filipino uh, form. Oh, I love these. Did folks see the new Spider-Man? Because I sure did. We can talk <laughs> about that later if you'd like it. It's really amazing. Okay. Um, all right, I am. Uh, do we have time for more people, or was that uh, all the folks that we could? Oh, uh, we it looks like we have two more with hands up, so we can go to Edgar next. I'll ask Edgar to unmute and spotlight. Okay. Yeah, sure. uh, and I I took a variety of characters uh, that have some similarities and some differences. I have the comic book character, the Spectre, that's fascinated me since. 1965, Mickey Mouse, Smokey the Bear, Aquamarina, the character from the uh, Super Marionation uh, Stingray television show, uh, uh, Frank and Joe Hardy, and Little Nemo in Slumberland. Fantastic. That's Smokey the Bear. <laughs> Accurate. And we can well, I did the best I could in three minutes. Amazing. And we'll go to Taro also. Let's say real fast. Hi, I'm Taro. Um, I'm from the Bay Area, and I didn't know that we were drawing six different characters, but I just drew Pikachu over and over again. Oh, <laughs> oh. my tablet just unplugged itself. <laughs> Hold up, Pikachu. Just really like Pikachu. I think I Pikachu. Is <laughs> oh. Sorry, my tablet just killed itself. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at all the emanata, the action, the emotion. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Thank you. All right. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. I'm going to move forward. Okay, can everyone see that again? Yeah. All right. So um, poetry in the Philippines is lush and full of metaphor, often full of song, and poetry was seen as ritualistic in some indigenous cultures in pre-colonial times. It was used in rituals and ceremonies for courtship and sometimes marriage. And I say sometimes because Many of our indigenous cultures valued courtship over marriage or the ceremony itself, which would be seen as backwards here in the US. Um, they're used for animus practices, funerals, mourning, and to teach moral or practical lessons through folklore. Expressing intense emotions of joy, anger, sorrow, and love was acceptable at all these kinds of events. So if you uh, are mourning somebody and there's a ritual for mourning, um, it's totally acceptable there to scream and shout, show your anger, um, et cetera. And we would use poetry as a way of expressing or song that also had poetic form um, as a way to express these emotions. And we often use our own type of rhyming, uh, rhyming structure, as well as uh, syllabic structure or meter, um, which is different from how we're going to do it today. Um, but Hopefully, it'll give you um, a, a good enough idea of how these things can be constructed. Um, one of the first Filipino poetry forms I was introduced to was the Balagtasan. Um, and the Balagtasan was, uh, is named after Francisco Balagtas. Um, his uh, Spanish name was Francisco Baltazar. Um, he was a poet in the Philippines who use quatrains to um, create a style of poetry that involved debate. So if uh, debate in the sense of um, not necessarily political ideas where Republicans and Democrats debate over a subject. 
uh, it was more like you, your friend died and now your friends go go to your funeral and they have different perspectives about who you really were and they're going to tell everybody. So that's that's the real origin of the Balaktasan. And I love that form of poetry of um, I know my friend so well. Let me tell you some dirt on him when he's dead. <laughs> that's lovely and romantic and sweet. Um, then there's the Awit and the Awit is also a kind of epic poem that uses quatrains uh, quatrains being four lines of poetry, um, and they are 12 syllables per line. They're connected quatrains, so you would um, make several sets of these stanzas and connect them all um, in order to tell a story. And then there's the Dalit, uh, and that's the quatrain, eight syllables each, and does not need to rhyme. Um, a lot of uh, the origins the origins are believed to be from Catholic chanting and including um, rhythms that are more um, born from indigenous practices snuck into Catholic practices so that indigenous folks could keep parts of their uh, identities and, and um, culture uh, through colonization. And today we're going to do the Tanaga. Some people pronounce this Tanaga or just other different pronunciations. I pronounce it Tanaga. So if you say it a certain way in front of another Filipino and it's mm -hmm. wrong, they're allowed to tell you that you're wrong and then tell me that I was wrong. But for now, this is how I pronounce it, Tanaga. Um, Tanaga typically do not have any titles, just like a lot of mini comics uh, and comic strips don't have titles. Um, and that's because we want the the Tanaga to stand on its own and for the title to not inform the reader about what the poem is. We see this a lot in haiku as well in Japan. Um, there are seven syllables per line, four lines, and a rhyme pattern typically with A-A-A-A, A-A-B-B, et cetera. And we'll go over those uh, very briefly. Um, tanagas were originally meant to be memorized, recited, and later maybe written down. Not all of our poetic forms have a written form, um, and some have survived generations just by being passed down uh, vocally uh, and verbally. The rhyme pattern is important for consistency, narrative voice and tone, rhythm, and it's a tool for memorization. Um, so I've heard some people, uh, my favorite art snobs, who say things like, um, a rhyming poem is like for children. It's like a limerick. It's, it's not a sophisticated. Um, but really the rhyming poem is the oldest type of poem and uh, has existed in several cultures over hundreds and hundreds of years. So I think it deserves some respect. The Tanaga is also full of metaphor. So we might be talking about um, the mountains and the springs, but really we're talking about our family members. Trying to go to the next slide. Let me see. I have to stop sharing and bring it up again. Thank you for your patience. No problem. Very excited. Let's see. Sorry. Almost there. Here we go. Okay. Whew, thank you for sticking with me while technology <laughs> took over my life. 
um, alliteration. Uh, first, a lot of us here, we probably read poetry and really appreciate it and even might study it. So this might be um, thrilling for you to listen to it again because you're a nerd and you love it. And then for other folks who've never heard of this stuff, it might be fascinating because we use these types of sounds every day. Um, and I think sounds so important in comics. So this part of the poetics overlaps with comics theory um, in terms of like onomatopoeia and em emanata and other things like that. So plosives, um, these are all types of alliterations or same sound um, sounds that I like to use and pay attention to in Tanagas, especially because they're so short. Uh, we can use a lot of emotion that's found in uh, various words and sensual details that are found in certain sounds, depending on your language. But in um, American English, these things pretty work, pr pretty much work um, consistently. So plosives are sounds like P and B, soft sounds. P. Dentals, sibilants are the S, sh, and sh, and Z sounds. Nasals, M, N, and G. Fricatives sound harder. Um, more friction. Gutturals are G's and K's. So we'll kind of look at some of those in a little bit. <clears throat> Do we have any questions about rhyme right now that folks might want to ask? I can't see the chat again for some reason. I'll keep an eye on the chat and if they have oh, any questions, I'll let you know. Sure. Okay. Feel free to ask questions throughout this too. We'll just keep it moving for now. Um, so here is an example of a Tanaga that I wrote that has an A-B-A-B -A -B rhyme scheme. So when we make our uh, comics today, we can pay attention to tiers and panels, how we wanna break apart these lines. We're gonna want to keep one line um, in each panel. So one line per panel. Um, and each line will correspond to an image. And the way that we go about it today is, is just uh, an exercise and you don't have to follow it every single time, of course. But here um, we can see that um, there is an A, B, A, B rhyme scheme. And if you were to start that way, the rest of your Tanagas to finish a story would have to keep that same rhyme scheme. Did Edgar have a question? I don't think so. I think um, oh, if anyone's okay. got a question, feel free to put it in the chat. Well, turn okay. it out. Thank you. Um, and you can also see here that we have uh, a close up of birds. We have like a full shot, a full panel of people carrying a house. And then um, a little closer zoom in of those people who look like feminine characters. Um, in the Philippines, in certain parts, we have a practice of community spirit, of doing things together for each other. Um, and we call that by a Nihon. And it's not just a spirit of community, but it's um, a philosophy of, and how a lot of our cultures interact with each other. And so that often looks like um, uh, my problem is the community's problem. The community is uh, going to be taken care of by me and vice versa. Uh, we take care of each other. So here we have feminine characters and I am deliberately trying to show for folks do understand Filipino culture um, that women are carrying uh, a lot of the burden of supporting each other in order for community to be uplifted and to survive. Um, and that is then contrasted with the words. So we're not necessarily doing do a specific imagery here where the text is exactly the same as the as the image, um, we're doing something a little bit different so that the words now have a different meaning because of the, the images that are associated with it and vice versa. This is another Tanaga and it's using AABB rhyme scheme. Um, and that's the same as a double couplet or two lines of poetry paired with another uh, double line of poetry. Um, usually we use this in folklore, horror, and um, psychologically thrilling uh, storytelling. <clears throat> I waited all day and night in the meadow for my love. She arrived from her long flight, dripping wet, cloud kissed, moonlit. Uh, so this one leaves a little bit more of an, uh, uh, an um, 
an ending that has a different sound. So typically that would be the end of that poem, or you could use this almost like as a volta at the very end of a long epic. If any of these words are confusing to you, you can absolutely talk about this more later with me or, or take note and leave a question. Um, but essentially what I'm trying to show here is that each line again is broken up by panel. Um, and although the lines themselves are broken up within the panel to have two lines, it's essentially still one line because we're counting it by syllable. So the Tanaga, I waited all day and night, seven syllables in one panel. We can also use this to tell horror stories uh, and to show something that's going on internally versus something that's going on um, uh, like visually, or you can directly draw what's happening in the text. So uh, when we do that, we, we're kind of like exaggerating or going for hyperbole, and this can be used very carefully in different parts of like a longer story told in Tanagas. Um, this particular um, doubling of image and, and words. So here, uh, she walked on the, on the street, down on all fours, hands and feet, and I'm also drawing that. It matches the text almost perfectly for hyper hyperbolic effect. And then the last example, this is AAAA -A 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 rhyme scheme. And this helps us connect the quatrains by having the same word that we're rhyming or sound that we're rhyming over and over. Um, we often use this in Filipino poetry to teach a lesson through folklore. So you'll hear a lot of this type of um, rhythm and rhyme scheme for teaching children and young people. Tiger crawling to and fro, see the demon in the snow. Her name is Belay Mar Margot, and she is 600 years old. So again, we're uh, pairing words with an image that doesn't quite match up. She doesn't look 600, so now we know there's something magical going on, or she's some kind of being. Right. Okay. In um, classic poetry, like in Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, um, uh, by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, you'll see that um, that entire epic poem is told in, in quatrains and it's because it's efficient. It's scene by scene by scene and then you eventually get to the end, but you get through this, this entire uh, adventure with just very dense quatrains of what's happening and who's feeling what. Um, and these illustrations were later done by Gustav Dory, who I'm a huge fan of. Um, just look at that. That's amazing. <laughs> and then another example from Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Again, I'm just showing this so that we can kind of see that we see quatrains everywhere. Um, and we saw illustrators very early on taking them on as illustration projects because they're fun, fast comics. Um, Gustav Dory did a lot of um, uh, sketches and etching that can nowadays be seen as as comics. Mm. He, he loved to turn to poetry to practice that. Okay, we're going to do this writing exercise and then do a five minute break. Um, okay, so first we're going to read this poem that is in quatrains. There's two quatrains here. Um, they're not Tanagas. Um, but they still follow um, a rhyme scheme and a syllabic rhythm. Uh, you don't need to make this exact type of a poem. We're instead going to read it, interpret it on our own, um, and do a free write about what we think it means, either for Langston Hughes or for ourselves. And the way that we're going to write that is on a piece of paper, um, you're going to respond to these questions that I have on the right. And you're going to keep your hand moving. So even if no thoughts are coming to you, you're going to keep your hand moving with X's and O's or squiggles until the next thought comes. And then you're going to write that thought <laughs> and keep answering those questions. So the questions, I will read the poem. But first, the questions are, um, what does this poem mean? How do I relate to it? What are my dreams? What have I let go? What do I hold fast? Hold fast too. Um, so in when we make poetry comics, um, 
you know, some folks that I've worked with will think, well, I can't, I just draw whatever and then write whatever and then combine them. Yes, you can absolutely do that. It's going to be hit or miss of whether it makes sense to other people or, or whether it's doing anything narratively at all, but uh, you can absolutely do that. That's just one way of, of piecing together a poem or any poem and, and a poetry comic. Uh, for this one, I just want us to get in the practice of reading poetry. Um, if most of us here read comic books or um, the newspaper more, I think it's just really important that if you're going to write poetry comics to also read a lot of poetry. So this is Dreams by Langston Hughes. You can listen to the, the rhythm and the rhyme. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for dream, when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. So let's take a couple of minutes now. Let's do about, we're gonna write for about seven minutes, seven to 10 minutes, I think. What does this poem mean? How do I relate to it? What are my dreams? What have I let go? What do I hold fast to? And keep your hand moving. Let me begin. If you pause and you're just looking into space, you might be thinking too hard. Just mm -hmm. look back at your paper and continue making squiggles. While you're drawing, make sure that you're breathing. Oh, are we drawing or writing? Oh, writing. <laughs> While you're writing, make sure that you're breathing. Thanks. If your hand hurts, make sure to stretch.
We have about a minute left. Keep your hand moving. Nikki's avatar is throwing me off. <laughs> the rabbit is going to look at me and wave, and I've just been waiting. <laughs> That's the time. Time. Uh, now we're just going to take a couple of minutes to look at your writing yourself and pick out some ideas that seem abstract. Ideas, emotions, um, underline them. So abstract versus concrete. Um, a chair is solid, tangible, concrete. That's a detail in poetry that we would use um, throughout the whole poem or for a striking moment in the poem. But emotions um, are usually uh, incited through a collection of these images um, uh, built on top of each other or next to each other uh, in some kind of way. Um, so here, what we're doing is that we're isolating abstract ideas, things that are not able to be pinned down and touched, um, concepts like love, um, like frustration, and um, things that would have to be described using tangible objects and, and um, solid objects to, to be communicated to someone else. Um, so take a, a minute and just find those abstract ideas those non-concrete ideas and underline them. Some of them might be surprising to you or are shocking or you're not really sure how to use them, um, but we're not thinking too hard here. We're just kind of looking what's abstract. What are some things that I like that I said that are true? And don't think too hard about what this is going to be. We'll take two minutes to do that and then we'll take a break until uh, eight. Is it eight your guys' time or everyone else's time? We'll take a five minute break. <laughs> okay. I think everyone's from everywhere, huh? Yeah. It's Saturday morning in Australia. <sighs> we have a lot of folks here today. Hello, everybody. When you're ready, you can take your break and just be back um, in about five minutes. Trinidad, what do you recommend? A couple people said they wrote very concrete things. I love that. I love that you did. Then find the most eloquently written line, your abstract <laughs> line that's most beautiful and underline those. Oh no, I, I love that avatar, that rabbit. <laughs> I just didn't know what I was looking at. And I kept looking at it like, is it going to wave at me? <laughs> Thank you. I do like that you guys have a lot of concrete details in it. That's totally, that's fine. That's wonderful. Make sure to take your break. 
get some water or stretch or anything. The next section is drawing and we'll, we'll sit down for a long time for that. I'm also just sitting here if folks want to ask me questions about anything at all until folks come back, but you can also just take your break. I'm not staring at you through my cam camera. We have so many Filipina, Filipinx writers here today. I'm so happy to see that. Hello. I taught comics, um, just to answer questions in the chat. I taught comics at California College of the Arts um, when they had their diversity program. Um, I helped develop the race and comics class there that is now taught by Brina. Um, and, uh, and then I did the gender um, and people of color comics class there at um, California College of the Arts. Then I went to teach at Western Colorado University for their um, online well, low residency program. And I got to teach genre fiction, but also um, comics. And then I've just done mostly community and workshop, uh, community workshops um, and in-home workshops with folks. Um, for the most part, I like to do sliding scale workshops for LGBTQ people and um, parents, especially those in the Bay Area who can't normally access um, cartooning classes because they're expensive or their parents, you know. Yes. Thank you, everybody. How do I choose colors? Okay, before we jump back into this lesson, um, I choose colors based on the houses around my house. What does that <laughs> mean? I walk around and I like to see the colors in people's homes. Uh, so their fences and then their flowers and what choices they made with their painting colors. And I'm like, I trust you. Some painter, man, woman, whoever, any gender, a painter figured out that this is going to look good. And I take those schemes and um, I see where I can apply them in my stories. And I just kind of lock them in because those color patterns and combinations uh, affected me. Okay. Hello, everybody. We're back. <laughs> and we're going to do a little bit of drawing now. And we are on time with everything, which is great. I think. But Tom, you can let me know if I'm wrong. Um, we are back. 
we're going to take a piece of paper uh, that's not the same paper we used for the warm up and not the same piece of paper that we used for the writing. We're going to draw on this piece of paper. You can fold it if you want to make a four panel grid, meaning fold right in the middle and then fold again um, lengthwise, hamburger wise, and hot dog wise. <laughs> um, and, uh, or you could just draw, you know, across right down the center of your page or draw four boxes, however you want to um, put together those uh, panels. I'll show again. Can you guys see my screen still? Yeah. Okay. So here we have almost like a, a typical four panel uh, page. Oh, abstract. Let me talk about that again. So uh, an abstract idea would be like love, but a tangible concrete idea would be a Valentine's card. Does that make sense? Or uh, a cross in Catholicism is a tangible object that you can touch and hold and it's concrete or it's not made of concrete, but you know what I mean? It's, you can <laughs> touch it. <laughs> it feels like it's made of concrete <laughs> if you're a sinner. And then <laughs> if you uh, want to think of what that represents, that might be um, religious aspects, the Trinity, whatever, and that would be the abstract idea. Does that make sense? We can go over that more um, at any point, but let me just show these again. Um, so these tiers are kind of lengthwise stacked on top of each other, do it that way. Here we have the text in between panels, in between tiers. And then here is more like picture book style where the images are on top and all the text is together. Okay, so construct that page. We'll do one more minute of making sure that you have four boxes, however you wanted to set that up. If you don't consider yourself an illustrator, you can just use triangles and squares and rectangles um, to build your images. We don't have a lot of choices for drawing today. <laughs> mm. We have uh, some images that um, we might find in, in nature. Uh, a tree, a snowy mountain, a bird, a river, a meadow. It doesn't have to be a snowy mountain. It could be a non-snowy mountain, if you prefer. I just feel like everyone likes drawing a little snow on their mountain. But um, <laughs> in your first panel, you're going to pick one of these images to draw. And then you cannot pick it again for the next panel. Um, some of you might want to like draw all, all uh, like one big river or one uh, a bunch of mountains to make up a mountain range. But for today, we're just gonna kind of see what happens when we have an isolated image um, and what surprising things come with the words juxtaposed beside it. Um, so instead of rep repeating the images, uh, we're gonna not do that today and try to pick one image per panel. So if you draw a tree, in panel one, then you can't draw it again later. And that goes for the rest too. We can't repeat anything in other words. Yes. Okay. So, all right. So you're not thinking about words right now. You're just thinking, hmm, which one of these would I like to draw in this panel? And where would I like to put it within this panel? And then you move on to the next one. So we should be working on one at a time, but all four right now. Yes, we're going to take okay. uh, oh, like, let's say 15 minutes to do that. Okay. And if folks need a little bit extra time, we can do that. You can put as much detail as you want. You can zoom in on the face of a bird instead of drawing an entire bird. Oh. You cannot repeat a bird or repeat any birds. <laughs> And 
and I'm here to answer questions about like just drawing or any comics related questions while you draw. You don't have to be completely silent. Any questions about those instructions? I'm not seeing any in the chat. Okay. While you're drawing, make sure that you are breathing and you're not collapsing into yourself. And <laughs> make sure you drink water. If you get dizzy, make sure to breathe a little bit and sit up right. Do anything you need. Tina wants to know if they can put a deer in the meadow. You can. You can add, if you have a tree, you can put an owl in your tree. Oh, I'm so <laughs> glad Ina asked this question. <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> If you have a river, you could put a fish in your river. Joanne wants to know how much photo reference you personally usually use. I, I sometimes uh, go around and take pictures of my neighborhood and um, the hills by my home because they're beautiful and inspire a lot of my storytelling. And then I often will look at them to sketch but just like basic composition and shapes of things. Um, and I think it's okay to use photo reference for particular projects or certain stories. So if you do that, it's okay. And Chris asks, should we leave space for text? Yes, you can. Uh, some folks might want to just, uh, write, you know, um, over things or erase for space after they see what they've drawn, but you can also at this point make room for some text. That's a cartoonist question. Everyone else, <laughs> their drawings humongous and fill up the entire panel. But you could do that too. So again, what we're doing is taking the lines of the Tanaga and making them into panels, essentially. So four panels, four lines of poetry. Right now, we're not constructing the, the poetic line, but we are making the structure or the, the format. Um, we're composing the page for that structure. You can put as much detail as you want into your panels. You can shade them or use colored pencils, or you can just do black and white, just ink. I really want to put a mountain behind my meadow, but that's, I'm not allowed to do that, right? You can put some foothills. Foothills, okay. Foothills are okay. Thank you. Okay. While you guys are drawing, I'm going to read you some quatrains by other writers. This is Ursula K. Le Guin, who most folks know the sci-fi writer, um, but she also wrote poetry. And this is a quatrain, part of a longer piece. And each um, quatrain in the piece has some element of the seasons near where she lived. So this one is solstice. And it goes, on the longest night of all the year, in the forest, up the hill, the little owl spoke soft and clear to bid the night be longer still. Mm -hmm. 
So here we have an A, B, A, B rhyme scheme because she carries uh, the story on for several more stanzas. Um, and it's easier to do that when it's just two rhymes interchanging. So year and clear, hill and still. And those are also examples of perfect rhymes. This is a poem. I'm going to read the whole poem. This is Net Light by Arthur Z. And he's a poet I studied a lot when I was uh, studying poetry at San Francisco State University in their creative writing program. One of the best programs I've ever been to. Um, Arthur Z, Net Light. Poised on a bridge, streetlights. On either shore, a man puts. A saxophone to his lips, coins, in an upturned cap and a carousel. In the piazza begins to turn. Where are the gates to paradise? A woman leans over an outstretched paper cup, leather workers sew. Under lamps, a belt, wallet, purse, leather dyed maroon, beige, black. Workers from Seoul, Lago, Singapore, a fresco on a church wall depicts the death of a saint a friar raises, both hands in the air. On an airplane, a clot forms in a woman's leg and starts to travel toward her heart. A string of notes rifles the water, and as the clot lodges at a market near lapping waves, men unload sardines in a burst of Argentine light. So these are quatrains that have slant rhymes and no rhyming scheme that's consistent. Um, and that's because Arthur Z uses a technique called enjambment where he ends a line and it carries on to the next one. Um, so it has a different type of rhythm than the other poems that I read. We have about seven more minutes left to draw. I'm going to read another one by Gwendolyn Brooks. This is called Sadie and Maud. And this is a set of quatrains as well with a rhyme scheme. Maud went to college. Sadie stayed at home. Sadie scraped life with a fine tooth comb. She didn't leave a tangle in. Her comb found every strand. Sadie was one of the livingest chits in all the land. Sadie bore two babies under her maiden name. Maud and Pa, Ma and Papa nearly died of shame. When Sadie said her last though long, her girls struck out from home. Sadie had left as heritage her fine tooth comb. Maud, who went to college, is a thin brown mouse. She is living all alone in this old house. So you can see again, quatrain um, is just a really good form for telling stories and it can be succinct. I think there's something interesting about um, of, of seeing a quatrain um, building and building and building to make uh, a longer poem. And we kind of do this often with with comics and you can do this with comic strips or a series of comic strips where there's four panels consistently and you can break that up in, at different times to affect pacing and surprise. But so much of that um, fourness appeals to, I think, cartoonists because of that rhythm.
at the end of this, I have a, a slide that has some recommendations for folks to read more or to um, uh, study this academically or to just read more uh, poetry comics. A few more minutes, put your finishing details in there or your colors or shading. If while you're drawing, you're telling yourself that it's ugly or it's not good or like, ah, this is the best I could do. And <laughs> just resigning yourself, just kind of take note of those thoughts and then remind yourself that you're having fun. Remind yourself that you're lucky to be sitting down to doodle and you did that for yourself. We all came here and did that. And so we don't have any room or any energy to say bad things about our drawings unless they're so terrible then you can show me and i'll let you know if they are <laughs> that's really nice to hear though i'm feeling <laughs> nice to hear that <laughs> so lucky to be doodling that is such a great thing to think yeah that's really nice We have about two more minutes. Thirty seconds. The reason why I give us time to fill um, is because we, I think, frequently as people who have to work and live, minimize a lot of things, and we'll say like, "Well, I'll at least read two pages today," um, when really we could be filling a lot of these moments with things that we really love. So, if you have uh, five minutes to draw with me then we're going to take that full five minutes. That's really nice. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And Nikki just put hers out in the sun so the paint can dry. Look at that. Painting. <laughs> That's amazing. Good for you. We're almost done. Can folks see this new slide? 
Yes, comics. Okay. You're gonna look at the underlined lines from the last exercise, lines that were either um, abstract ideas or you just really like the way they sound. It's all you need. Um, you can look at those lines and try to uh, make them into seven, seven syllable lines. So um, if you have a big jumble of words, a few sentences, now you got to condense it into um, four lines, seven syllables each. So maybe you, you underline six lines that you really like. So take four of those and now try to construct them so that they are made in seven syllables. Yes, being able to touch your love within your soul, absolutely abstract. Can't be doing that. Can't be touching your. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, uh, so again, we're doing uh, four lines. You might not start off with four. You might have a whole bunch of lines or a jumble of words together. Um, what you're going to do is to construct four lines seven syllables each. They don't necessarily have to all connect because I think that takes way more time when you're normally writing a poem, right? It takes several uh, several um, stages, especially with comics too. We also have several stages in comics. So for now, our goal is not to necessarily make them rhyme yet because that might take too much energy and time at this point. Um, and you're not necessarily trying to make a narrative just yet. We just need four lines, with seven syllables each. So rewrite those, make them clear somewhere on your piece of paper. And then when you're ready, we're going to drop those lines into your panels, one line per panel. Let's do one thing at a time though. Let's make sure that we understand that we're rewriting our very lovely words from our writing exercise and constructing four lines with seven syllables each. You can count on your fingers to make sure, because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm writing poetry, this is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and you can pick your rhyme scheme. I just don't want folks to think too hard about the rhyme scheme just yet. Um, because then we start trying to think, okay, if I rhyme this word with that word, does it make sense? And now it doesn't make sense. And now I have, to, and there's just a lot of um, rewriting that has to happen at that stage. So for now, don't worry too much about the rhyme scheme. But if you are trying to do that right now, you can choose your rhyme scheme. In a few minutes, I'll remind us to move on to writing those lines into our comic. But for now, you can take time to rewrite those words. And I wrote the word comics at the top of this slide and the, the flyer with a K. Um, in the Philippines, we have our own comics culture. Um, some of it does relate to um, like publishing in America uh, and newspaper printing. But for the most part, we have our own lineage when it comes to comics. Um, and a lot of that is associated with some of our like national heroes and national artists that we um, have looked up to for a generation or more. Um, and that has trickled down into comics culture. Um, a lot of adults and young people like comics or grew up with them in the Philippines, just like um, maybe not to the same degree, but folks in Japan growing up with manga. Um, my adoptive mother learned English by reading comics, my really small comic strips, um, and then watching Kung Fu movies. But <laughs> mostly in comic strip form because it was easy to understand. And it was pretty common for folks to be reading them. 
So if you go to the Philippines now, uh, there's several Comic Cons, um, and some of them resemble the Comic Cons here, uh, but a lot of them are their own, um, have their own vibe and, and uh, rich culture and history. So we use the K in the Philippines to communicate about that um, distinct uh, comics culture. Thank you for folks who have to go now. Thank you for, for coming and see you next time. Oh, I like Kung Fu Hustle. <laughs> yes, important topics. <laughs> yes. I entered into the chat, just a reminder, we're doing four lines, seven syllables each line. It does not have to rhyme and it does not have to make narrative sense, meaning those four lines do not have to necessarily connect. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that part. <laughs> When you do this on your own, you do want it to make sense. Um, for now, we're just kind of learning the, the steps to constructing it, but you will want to consider rhyme and you will want to consider how this is, how it uh, sounds to someone else. So you can read it or recite it to someone else and see if they understand what you mean. Okay, if you have already written these lines, make sure you now brought out your other piece of paper that has your drawings. And you're going to rewrite those words one line per panel. So each panel shall have one line, seven syllables. I think, uh, Catherine said that she didn't, doesn't know if um, they'd be able to construct poetry purposefully um, just with rhyming. And I think that is pretty, pretty purposeful <laughs> because once you get into rhyming, um, you start having to consider meaning and uh, then you're automatically just constructing poetry. <laughs> you're taking things out, adding things replacing you're like completely structuring something once you start looking at um, rhymes a syllable you can think of it as a count so um, look at your underlined lines from the last exercise look at your underlined lines from the last exercise so uh, every clap there was a syllable um, you can see it as like a music note they're just one note. <laughs> Anyone else have an explanation for syllables? I think that's how I break it down. You can also go into the dictionary, look up a word, and it'll tell you how many syllables. It'll show you by separating it with a dash or a dot if you're not completely sure. And someone dropped in a really cool um, syllable counter into the oh, chat. Oh, yeah. Way that's up. a really neat writing tool. Thank you. Take care.
in Western poetry, the words read left to right. Um, you can certainly do it differently if you want to, but it might be confusing to other folks. Um, for this exercise, it would be helpful if you wrote your words like in um, Western reading order from left to right. Once you're done, you can fine tune your drawings and sign your comic. I said sign your drawing, but <laughs> in the slide, but I mean, slide, slide your drawing. I mean, <laughs> sign <laughs> your comic. <laughs> if folks want to share when they're done, um, I'd love to hear. Thank you folks who have to leave. I really appreciate you coming and for sticking around for so long. Go have dinner. I think some folks are a little ahead and some folks are just trailing behind a little bit. So um, whenever folks uh, feel like they're done, you can feel free to uh, let us know that you wanna share. And that is how we'll know. Yeah, and you can do that with the um, the raise hand button. Oh, Lizzie's got hers up already. Her there's up. Our, um, should we just dive in, Trinidad, and spotlight some people as they come on? Yeah. All right, Lizzie, you're there. Hi, Lizzie. Hang on a second. Um, uh, there we go. Uh, I drew on an iPad today. So I don't know if it'll show up very well. Uh, oh. A purposeful activity, strongly in a direction. Full realization is hard. Had to give up on knowing. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you. This is so cool. I love that. That's beautiful. That. Lizzie, awesome. Thank you, Lizzie. Um, we've got Jim and then Blaze and Marlene. Let's see. Here we go. Shall I go? Sh sure. All right. So can you see there? Um, maybe I'll step back a little bit. So I was thinking of that poem as like a, a Disney movie condensed. So I, I did start with... Uh, if you wish upon a star, uh, it won't get you to your goal. Better yet, just buy a car and then listen to your soul. That's fantastic. Disney condensed is a great way to describe this form. Yeah, but rhyming <laughs> anything with condensed is a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Thanks. you very much. All right. So let's see. We'll go to Blaze and then Marlene and then Laura. Let's Please. See. There we go. Hello. Hello. Um, I did mine. On... <laughs> Hi. I did mine on paper. And um, I don't know if you can see mine. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And I wrote, um, there is freedom in my lines, each a leaf of a whole tree, offshoots of my own magic and vocalized fantasies. Beautiful. A bird and my tree and my meadow and my river. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. We'll go to Marlene next. Here we go. Marlene, can you, let's see. I think you're muted, Marlene. Can you unmute? Yeah, I thought you were going to do that, but um, yeah, good morning, um, Trinidad, Tom, and friends. Um, mine is not a quatrain. I think it's a sestet. Uh, sestet six panels, is that correct? <laughs> I'm a bit of a rookie, so pardon me. Uh, 
um, as I said, I am going to um, devote my poetry, if I may, to um, Emperor Caligua. Um, Emperor Caligua, so rhyme scheme is A, B, B, A, A, B. And I have to remove my background. Excuse me. I think that might be better. Yeah. So there he oh. is. And um, the rhyme scheme goes like this. Empire of gloom and boom. Next one is a hand with a little space in between. So, you know, there's a, a message in that. And it's telling us that Caligua is doing something. And the line goes, Caligua, a hungry tyrant. So um, I put a volcano in the background because he was volcanic in nature. And then uh, the next one is a bloody axe. His weary eye on Jamelis. Jamelis was his cousin and uh, the pre previous emperor, Tiberius, wanted one of them to become the emperor. And in the meantime, the two of them, Caligula and Jamelis, were having an internal fight about who was going to be the emperor. So then I went on to the next um, frame and they, in the Rome itself, during uh, Caligula's um, reign, were very unhappy with him because of his raucous na nature. He threw lavish parties, he um, had several women, even though he's supposed to be married to one of his sisters, which is incest. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of intrigue in the story, uh, 37 AD. And then um, the next one is, ang it was angry mobs, protest ablaze, luxury, dynasty, opulence. So I drew uh, the peace sign and a sickle to show the oppositional feelings of the mob and the people in Rome and uh, the surrounding countries around Rome. And then finally, dreams crushed too soon. They assassinated him because of his weird behavior and he became a little bit de deranged. So I wrote, dreams crushed too soon. And he designated a coin of, his, of himself uh, to the Roman monetary system. Yeah, I enjoyed this. Uh, I'm not very good at, at poetry, but I, I had a try. Thank That's you. wonderful. Did you use watercolor? I did. I used watercolor and acrylic paint. Wonderful. I hope you keep it up. I'd love to see more of it. Do you make comics normally? Uh, I, I learned recently through the inspiration of Tom and um, uh, Friday night workshop, comic workshop. I'm in Australia. So over here, we're having breakfast, not dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Marlene. We'll go to Laura next and Taro and Alun. Hello. Hello. What a fun exercise this was. I loved it. Let's see. Um, hold fast to creative time. Make new connections, sustain. Uh, discern, let's attempt new things. And spread peace. Release, no more strain. Hmm. Wonderful. You did rhyming. I think so. Very nice. Thanks Thank you so for doing that. Thanks, Laura. 
We'll go to Taro next. Hey, um, so I did mine in all blue. Oh gosh, I don't know if you can see it. There we I go. Can see. It's backwards, but it says, oh wait, I can't read backwards. Life is scary <laughs> um, when you're lost. Um, lofty dreams are hard to hold. I hate feeling meaningless. And it's hard. What is that? It's hard to fly without dreams. I had to remember mm. that because it was backwards. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. That's one of fun. The bird. Oh, I feel that panel so much. <laughs> <laughs> really lovely, Taro. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll go to Alu next. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, so I had trouble figuring out what to do because there wasn't too much that was abstract in what I wrote. But what I finally settled on, I had a sentence that I know it's kind of weird, but it was the only semi-abstract thing I could find. If they ever do find a way to upload people, I really have mul multiple copies of me just so I can get everything done. Mm -hmm. so I tried to figure out how to get that into a quatrain, and uh, here, let me share my screen. Is that okay? Can I share my screen? Uh, yeah, I'll have to give you permission for that. Hang on, Ellen. Okay. Um, I usually do these on computer. There you go. There you go. There we go. So I did something different this time that I played more with fonts than I usually do. Usually, I just use my own custom font. But so here's what I ended up mm -hmm. with. If ever technology uploads people to the net, then I'd want copies of me just to get my goals all met. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Nothing to do with the picture, but it will. <laughs> That's great. I love everyone's bird panels. I feel them in my heart. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Alun. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go to Troy next and then Edgar. Let's see. Troy's going to have to come on video. Um, all right, maybe we'll go to Edgar, then we'll come back to Troy. Oh, wait, Troy's here. Hang on, Edgar. We'll go to Troy first. I think Troy's there. No, I'm not sure. Um, okay, wait. All right, we're going to skip to Edgar. We'll come back to Troy and then Rob. Edgar, okay. you all are... Right. Yeah. Can you, can you... Okay, here's mine. And uh, what I... I took some of the uh, concepts in my writing, but made a story out of it and increasing close-ups. It starts with, it's called The Bird's Eye View of the Dreams. It starts with the snowy capped mountain, and it says, the, mountain, the mountain's dream to nurture life. Then it goes to the second panel, The Tall Tree, had been lonely. Then you see in the branches of the tree, the bird in the nest, bird brought joy to the branches. Uh, however, the bird has its eye on the river across the way. Its dream was to fly beyond. Is that colored pencil? Yes, that's colored pencil. Uh, if it was better paper, I could turn it into a watercolor because it's watercolor pencil. Ooh, but yeah, it's colored that. pencil. I love that. I like the expressiveness of your lines and that oh, bird. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very it's, much. Oh, yes. Yeah. What'd you say about the bird? Oh, I love it. The feathers, the oh, expression. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay, thank Edgar, you. thank you so much. Thanks. All right, hello. Uh Troy, you're on. Yes, can I can I can you can I share a screen? Um yeah, hang on a second. Oops, I'm losing uh hang on a second. Oh, there we go. Um okay, you should be able to. Keep it in there. All right, share screen. Creatures get into it. All right, can you guys see it? No, we see a black. Oh, there oh, we go. Yes. Yep, yep. All right, I'll read it because I, I didn't use my fonts today. <clears throat> the bird does not know or care. She accepts life day by day as is. To you, it might not make sense, but to her, it's a gift. Lovely. Oh, and the eggs at the bottom. 
Yes. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. I love those drawings. Thank you, Troy. Very, really nice. And I like the lettering too. You don't have to use that font. <laughs> That's what I think anyway. All right. Just write anyway. it like that every time. Yeah. All right. We're going to go to, we're going to go to Rob next. Hey, Rob, how you doing? Oh, good. How are you? Oh, I was nice. trying to like air thing my thing to my screen, but instead, I guess I'll just, I don't know if you can read that. See that? I can see that. Okay. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Eh. Uh, efficient for what or who and then there the tree uh, da -da. dreams clog up everything my wheelchair eats dreams uh, but why or, mm. but for why and then there's a goat and it's uh, oh awake to no dreams for now so that's about it Thank you. It sounds a little bit more negative than I feel, but you know, that's just... Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. The goat. <laughs> the goat. Yes. We'll go to Chris next. Let's see. Here we go. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, don't let your dreams die alone. Grow them into something new. Mm -hmm. uh, Maintain your grasp high above frozen tombs where no dreams flow. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Were you using pen? Yeah, it's all just in pen. That's fantastic. I really yeah. like the line work on your tree and the colors <laughs> of your bird. Thanks very much. This was interesting. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Looks like can. Uh, looks like we have three more we can hit. Dara, Michaela, and Nikki. And then maybe, oh, and then maybe Gabby. So that's four more. Is that all right, Trinidad? Yes. Okay. Dara, we'll go to Dara. Oh, I have to ask you to unmute. Hang on a second. I lost track of things here. That should work. There we go. Uh, I think I'll, this is Franklin, Hi. by the way. Hi, Franklin. <laughs> Also drawing. Um, I think I'll read it first and then show you the pictures just because it's easier. Dented oblong shapes jiggle. Trust spins above concrete grass, sputtering into the mass. Plucked breath holds us up. Oh, beautiful. Is that marker? Yeah. Lovely. Thanks. Yeah. Striking colors. Really Can great. You want to show yours? We're still, still working on it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming, both of you. Post Thank it on you. the socials. All right. Michaela's next. Can I um, uh, share screen? You should be able to, Michaela. Let me know if you are not able to. Yeah. It looks like you. Can you see it? Mm hmm. So it's, I stayed pretty close to the poem. I really like Langston Hughes. Uh, I just looked at some of his poems recently. He We went to the Soviet Union, which a lot of people don't know, and wrote poetry there that was published in Soviet languages and just recently translated into English. It was like lost poetry of his. Wow. So anyway, so I just wrote, I just did the images very simply in my own way, barren breath. Wait, there's something that even snow I do not fear. With love, I feel the machine. Even nightmares I embrace. Lovely. Thanks. It was fun. Thank you. I really appreciate all, all the marks with the with the marker, the black marker. You ended up having like gradients. Is it brush or using a marker? It's a it's a black marker that I really like that's running out of color. So you can get a some nice grays out of it. Oh yeah. That's perfect. And again, <laughs> this emotional bird panel. I feel it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. Michaela, I'm gonna ask you to uh click stop sharing if you can. Great, thanks. And we'll go to Nikki and then Gabby. Um yeah, low to add a missile launcher. Oops. Or maybe missile drops. Nikki, are you there? Um,
Oh, Nikki's muted. Nikki, I think you're muted. Um, Aha, thank you. There we go. Yep. It's gone wrong here. Close. Okay, thank you for this. Um, awesome. I have... Um, why can't I see myself? Switch to speaker. Look okay. at With no dreams, the people perish. Sense of failure casts her net. Those fragile things that I wish lost to eternal regret. Hmm. Wow. Some of the, Thank some, you. Some of these later ones are rhyming, Trinidad. The ones that are yeah. taking a little longer. <laughs> yeah, I did the A, B, A, B. That was um, words for me I find very difficult, even if they don't rhyme. So I'm a drawer first. The words are difficult, but that was that was great, and it was really interesting to see how the um, how your illustrations just ended up fitting in. I was kind of thinking, I know you know where you're heading, so I'm just going to trust the process. <laughs> so um, that was really that interesting. You, these are your drawings and your words, and you made this completely on your own with just a couple of guidelines so that's wonderful mm. and i appreciate mm. seeing all your your uh inking tools uh -huh. that's satisfying oh, yeah <laughs> thanks thank, thank you. you okay we'll go to gabby christine jane let's see here we go oops hello everyone i'm very happy to be here hi um, right so sorry let me undo my background. Hmm. There we go. All right, so it says failure was unthinkable. My world ended times over. I dream still of secret things. A sacred kiss transformed me. Mm. Beautiful. That's just pencil on drawing paper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm muted. Yeah, that was really beautiful. Thank you, Gabby. Thank we'll you. Christine and then finish with Jane. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Trinidad. Thank you, Tom, and for everyone for sharing. Um, mine goes, hello. Um, mine goes, the wind changed my direction. I trusted myself to fly. I kept moving through the sky, graceful and uncompromised. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Thank <laughs> you. Awesome. Okay, we will ask Jane to unmute and then come on. Okay, let's see. Thank you again. This is a fun class. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. Um, I, what I, I wrote is, life a river keeps changing. Dreams like bird keep life moving once we stop dreaming we die so live a life dream and climb high lovely look at that bird they're fantastic <laughs> that was fun i like how your images take up space and yet they still have a lot of room for um breathing and for more text even that's that's lovely thank you Wonderful. Thank you, Jane. I'm going to spotlight Trinidad again. Trinidad, thank you so much. My gosh, this was really amazing. <laughs> and it really got a lot of emotion and yeah, out of people. And this this mixture of um, emotional words and, and, and forcing us to stay with these concrete images and also not letting us repeat. <laughs> it really forced us to make new connections, which we might not have made normally. And I really think that was great. Thank you very much. Uh, sure. If you try this on your own, um, you don't necessarily have to, you know, write a whole book with Tanagas, but it'd be really cool to just use it as a tool to help keep you flexible, keep your mind elastic and um, creative. Um, a, a reminder for everyone to share this on um, social media. I'm going to post that really fast in the chat right here. Um, also, I, I forgot Trinidad's um, 
private oh. Instagram account. I'll let you put that there. Um, and uh, did you want to share us with that that resource list on the way out, or should yes. we just let me oh, okay. share screen one more time before All you right. guys go? And then we'll ask everyone to unmute and give you a big raucous applause and thank you on the way out. Let's see that resource list. Okay, can we see this one? Yeah. Okay. So read more poetry. Here's a list of some contemporary writers who um, master quatrains and then a book um, on verbal arts in the Philippines um, by Herminia Menez Colben. Um, and that's a harder book to get a hold of, uh, but that is what I used initially when I started studying um, Filipino poetry. And then uh, Ink Brick or Over the Lines publishes um, uh, poetry comics and uh, they have just amazing collection of really cool people. And then my book is Arrive in My Hands, published by Black Jose Press, and has a collection of erotic queer uh, comics based on like speculative fiction, folklore, sci-fi, etc. Thank you very much. And Black Jose Press is a great press in out of Miami, I think. And that's you can definitely find that there on their website. Okay, I am going to ask everyone to unmute. Say thank you to Trinidad. Thank you, Trinidad, so much for doing thank this. You, thank you, Trinidad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much, appreciated. much appreciated. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much. We'll see you. Everybody have a good evening, oh. a good afternoon, a good morning. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Kakite. Okay, thanks.